Welcome. Uh, like Zoe said, I'm Matt Zastapil. I'm one of the additive manufacturing specialists here. Um, and I'm super excited to be adding Entampsis to our lineup at EAC. So I wanted to open up and quickly introduce EAC for everyone. Uh, all right. Yep. So our mission here is to transform the way companies design, manufacture, connect to, and service their products. So we live and breathe this motto every day. You can see it on most of all of our content. Um, it really is full circle with all of the things that we do offer. Okay, so to keep it simple, we help companies bring products to market with the right tools and resources to be successful. As you can see, we are a major PTC partner and we have some awards to back it up. All right, so I'll pass it over to Zach to dig a little more into our offerings and capabilities. Thank you, Matt. Uh, yeah, so to, to continue off of Matt's uh, last statement uh, with being a major PTC partner, uh, here is an overview of our many capabilities here at EAC. Um, so we offer a wide range of products and services uh, that include CAD, simulation, product lifecycle, and service lifecycle management software as well as 3D printing solutions with Form Labs and now in Tamsis. Uh, and if you do have any questions regarding <clears throat> our capabilities, feel free to send those over in the chat. Otherwise, I'd be happy to discuss after this webinar, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, and then you can go to the next slide here. Um, so currently we're headquartered here in Minneapolis, Minnesota, but we're not limited to just the Midwest region uh, as our team is spread throughout the country to ensure that we'll always have somebody local uh, that you can count on. Um, and then with that, I will, I'll pass things over to Wang uh, for the introduction to in Tamsis. Awesome. So for those that don't know who I am, my name is Wang. Uh, I am the head of desktop solutions over at in Tamsis. Um, my background is pretty vast in the additive space at this point, uh, but I did come from a reseller pre privy to my past, similar to EAC, um, and that was one of the main reasons why uh, we reached out to EAC to become a partner. Uh, we valued a lot of the same insights uh, where, where it comes in to play with uh, the whole workflow, uh, where we want to push the entire um, ecosystem and not just uh, 3D printers. So where we see, where we fit in with uh, EAC is we'll see in a little bit. But to talk about in Tamsis as a whole, uh, we were founded in 2013. Uh, our first printer launch was in 2015. Along the way, we picked up a quite a few interesting investors uh, where Sequoia Capital and Porsche actually are, are one of our biggest investors. Um, so we are well suited to kind of expand in, in the space. Uh, I know FFF or FDM has been uh, quite a few players already uh, in the ecosystem, but uh, we do offer a little bit uh, different type of printing, uh, different type of solutions for different types of applications. Um, so that's kind of where we fit in uh, well into the space. But uh, as as we are now moving further along, um, let me see if I can get to the next slide. Uh, so uh, in Tamsis is headquarters globally in uh, Shanghai, um, but we do have a North American office here in Minneapolis um, and a European office in Germany. Uh, at, to this day, we are at about 3,000 printers shipped and installed worldwide. Um, and we're becoming one of the, the leading uh, solutions when it comes to Peak uh, and Ultim. So where we fit in with EAC, I kind of touched base on a little bit about this. Um, 
EAC provides CAD solutions, simulations, uh, and then it gets to the point where we fit in uh, when it comes to prototyping and production. Um, additive manufacturing, not just in TAMSIS, but the solution itself, it actually helps reduce manufacturing costs, cuts down lead times. Uh, what I mean by that is when you're on a factory floor and a engineer or a technician needs a, a, a manufacturing aid, instead of waiting it for it to get CNC, you can actually do it in-house and cut your lead time by probably 75%. Um, not just the fiscal cost, but the time save is just what we're really looking at here. Uh, but as many of you guys already know, EAC does offer their own 3D printing solution, which is partnered with Formlabs. Um, I'm very well versed in their solutions, um, being that I've owned a couple of them, <laughs> uh, but it, it's a little different. So um, we'll, 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 get, we'll get into that right now. Um, so where, where we are a little bit different in SOA and SOS, um, don't get me wrong, SOA is probably one of the, oops, a little bit too far here. If we wanna go back a slide, sorry. So SLA is very visual appealing. Uh, you don't see the layer lines as much. Uh, it's very, very good and easy on the eyes. Um, that's where it fits in with visual prototypes, uh, certain molds, and it's uh, things you need in high detail. And then you get into SLS where it's small batch production because you can just kind of stack uh, all your parts into a build chamber and just print on top of each other. Um, and that's where you see a lot of companies use that technology for uh, small fitment pieces or just things that you want to do in uh, batches of 50 to 100 parts at a, in a chamber. Um, where FFF fits in is due to the fact that it is a little bit more affordable. Um, it's easy to, to do. It's great for first look prototypes, um, fitment tests, jigs and fixtures, manufacturing tools, uh, and then functional prototypes. And then in certain cases we can do end use parts with the higher performance materials. Uh, where this is so important is if you're using a functional prototype or a first prototype on SLA or any other technologies, it's quite expensive to do um, different iterations on it. Whereas you can use anywhere from PLA to um, ABS and it'd be very affordable. Uh, so you can, in certain cases, you can get a spool of PLA for $15, $20 a spool. So, so it cuts the cost down a lot in that aspect. Um, so in TAMSIS as a whole, uh, what makes us unique in this space is the, the quality of the printers. We do a little bit, things a little bit different. Um, in our two bigger machines, we actually use liquid, liquid cooling on the print head um, that allows it to have better build quality when you're using the more temperamental materials. Um, and then you have a very easy to use interface. Um, our in TAM touch is pretty cool. Uh, I, I honestly think it's one of the better interfaces when it comes to 3D printing. Uh, there's a lot you can do on it that's outside of the slicer, which is uh, not many other 3D printer companies do that, but uh, it allows you to actually kind of check in on your print and do certain things that you wouldn't be allowed to in other areas. Uh, so our material um, is cost efficient. There are definitely, definitely other avenues for filament as a whole. Um, we're not talking about PLA and stuff because PLA you can get anywhere, but when it comes to the more temperamental and more engineering materials, it is very cost efficient. Um, we do get into the space where peak 
typically it's you can go for over a thousand dollars a spool but relative to the actual cost of peak it is actually very affordable to bring it in house um, and then the low is one of the lowest costs of ownership when it comes to the, to a printer with the capabilities of doing peak and ultim um, and if you guys want to learn about that in the future definitely definitely reach out to eac and they can walk you through that So we, we talked about this whole total workflow solution and why we fit with EAC. Um, we, we provide all three aspects of the entire workflow of printing with our printers. Uh, we have in TAM Suite, which is our slicer. It is Cura based and very, very, um, similar to every other slicer you see in the market today. Uh, but if you know 3D printing, you know Kira is one of the best slicers to use. Um, and ours is based off of that. And, and then we talked about in Tam Touch a little bit earlier. And a material overview, um, we do offer more than this, but these are the kind of materials we focus on. Um, especially on the left-hand column here, you see PEAK and PEI, or in other words, Ulta. Um, this is where we shine. Uh, our technology allows us to be able to print PEAK and PEI very successfully and consistently uh, due to the fact with uh, our build chamber temperature, um, our liquid cooling, and a lot of other things that our machines are capable of doing that allows us to use these materials very well. Uh, and then our portfolio of TAM engineering materials are very solid. Um, anything you can think of, most, most engineers, most manufacturers will get away with ABS and um, a nylon ca carbon fiber. Uh, it does the vast majority of what you want out of a 3D printed part. And then we have a uh, a few different options for support materials. There's hips, breakaway, PVA, and um, for peak material, we do have a chemical uh, solvent support material. Um, but we are open source. All of our printers are open source. You're more than welcome to try other materials. Uh, we do have a few partnered materials that we already have profiles for due to that partnership. Uh, there's BASF, Victrex, oh, One How, and Covestro. Uh, but yeah, so like I said, there's these materials. Um, yes, we have at this point over 30 branded materials. Uh, you are more than welcome to try uh, other materials. It's just that, that our printers are tuned for these materials already. It's just a little bit easier to use some of our stuff. Um, so now we get into our printers. Uh, let me go back one. This is actually our lineup of printers. Uh, we have the FunMat HT, it's your entry level printer. And then your the, the Pro 310, which is coming out in a couple months here. Um, it's on pre-order right now, up until the end of the month. And then the 410, which is the first step into true industrial 3D printing. And then the big guy, this is a 610. Um, so we get into the FunMat HT. This was actually our first printer. Um, this was our flagship printer for the past, I want to say, seven years now. Um, oh, it's skipping ahead. But this was groundbreaking in its own right. Um, to have a heated build chamber up to 90 degrees on a desktop printer was unheard of. Um, even to this day, there's only two printers out there, or two or, two or three, um, that are openly available that can heat up um, to this temperature as a desktop printer. Um, so the, it's, you can actually print peak in a pinch on this printer. There are definitely steps that you have to take in order to make it work on this printer, but it is possible. And at the price point where it's at, so it's a shade under $6,000. Um, it is the most affordable 
peak printer on the market today, even till this day after seven, eight years. Uh, the, the build volume is pretty, pretty decent. It was 10 by 10 by 10 in inches. Um, it's very easy to use, very easy to install. Uh, the, the only downside that I see on this printer is that it's a single extruder. Um, but if you're looking to print small peak or peck parts, this is the way to go. Um, it is very industrious. The thing weighs like 120, 130 pounds. It's not your printer made of acrylic or something like that. <laughs> it's actually CNC metal. Um, and then for this price point, nothing on the market compares to it. And then we move on to the next printer that is set to hit our portfolio pretty shortly here. Um, again, we're, it's, it's gonna take a step into, uh, a, we call this the industrial desktop 3D printer because of the quality of the build itself, the way it actually retains 90 degree, uh, 100 degrees Celsius in the chamber. Um, it's unlike anything else we've seen in, in the market. Uh, it is an IDEX printer for those of you that don't know what IDEX is. It is independent extruders. Um, so at that point, you can do a, a dual print. So you can print the same part twice. You can mirror it. Um, this helps cut down production time on simple parts. Um, we had a little fun for the last trade show where we printed a bunch of bottle openers. And if you were to print it normally, it would take you maybe, I don't know, 12 to 18 hours just for like um, seven or eight of them. We cut that down efficiently by like 40, 50%. And we were able to knock these out in, um, within like seven or eight hours. And we had a bunch of them to give away at the trade show. But uh, so that's some of the kind of things that you can do with IDEX at this point. Um, it's very unique uh, when it comes to desktop printing to, to, have, to be able to do that. Uh, but yeah, so so why buy a Pro 310? Um, not only that it is a uh, IDEX extruded dual extruder printer, um, it's 100C build chamber, but why is that so important? When you print with materials like ABS or PC or a, even ASA or um, your nylon carbon fibers, they're very temperamental. Uh, so if you get passive heat from the build plate, it's not gonna effectively print your part with the, the, uh, the properties that you want it to, to out of it. Um, due to the technology of FFF, the Z axis actually loses about 25 to 40% of integrity strength. Uh, but the fact that it's a fully heated build chamber, the layers actually melt and adhere at a better uh, rate, and it allows you to keep some of that Z strength back. Um, so that it's very, very important to have that heat in that printer to allow you to print some of those more exotic and more um, structurally strong materials. Uh, Like, like, unlike any of our other printers, this thing is very heavy. Um, it weighs about 230, 240 pounds. Uh, I know this for a fact because I actually have this in my own home, in my home office, and we had to bring it up a flight of stairs. <laughs> I'm not even gonna lie to you. It was incredibly hard to carry and bring up the stairs. But um, the, the moral of the story is, even though it's very industrious, you can still have it at home. Uh, so this is where the applications for this printer is through the roof. Uh, you can use it on the factory line, you can use it at an office, you can use it at home, you can use it in a school. There's many different places that you can actually keep this because it's fully enclosed and it has uh, filters inside the printer, which allows you to use it freely and not have to worry about the toxic fumes. Um, 
And then we move over to the first step into true industrial 3D printing, uh, which we call additive manufacturing. So with this, uh, we get a little bit bigger build volume. We're at 12 by 12 by 16 at this point. Um, again, it's a heated build chamber. Uh, this one goes up to 90 degrees Celsius, um, which allows you to print peak and peck. Uh, not Ultim so much on this printer, but peak and peck. Uh, one thing that sets this printer apart from everything else in its class is the liquid cooling. Um, because of the way peak is melted down and printed to avoid pre-annealing, which is a little bit more on the higher end side of additive talk, uh, which we can definitely dive into in the future. But um, it is very, very critical that the temperature at the print head is actually cooled right before it actually prints. So the liquid cooling in this printer actually helps it. Um, and it allows you to print peak consistently on this printer. So it's a great middle size printer. Um, again, cost of ownership for a peak or peck printer, this is still one of the more affordable options. Um, the printer runs around $25,000, but if you're looking for similar production to price, you're looking at something twice its cost. Um, but yeah, this is, I, I honestly like this printer a lot. This is one of my more favorite printers in our portfolio. And then we get to our biggest printer. It's the Pro 610. This is 24 inches by 20 by 20. Um, this is a very, very unique printer. It actually um, heats up the build chamber up to 300 degrees Celsius. Um, nozzle temperature goes up to 500 C. And that allows you to print with PEI. In other words, Ulta. Um, there is vast majority of people who try to do Ultim, but to, in order for you to do it properly, uh, PEI 9085, you actually need a build chamber temperature of about 180. And when you go to even more extremes of PEI 1010, you would need 20, uh, 225C in the chamber. Um, to this day, I think we are actually the hottest build chamber you can get right now. Um, there aren't many 300 degrees Celsius printers. Do we need 300 degrees Celsius? Probably not, it's especially if I'm saying 1010, you only need 225. But that extra jump in temperature allows us to, to, to properly do 225. Um, so like I said, this is vastly, vastly bang for the buck when it comes to a printer of this capabilities. Uh, it's, there's a lot of differences in it as well that sets it apart. It is ball screw driven with servo motors, which uh, allows you to print more accurately. Um, there are a lot of safety features on this printer that allows you to uh, operate this machine without having too many issues. And just based off of price point, so this one goes for about 125,000. Uh, your competitors, as you can see on the screen, um, is vastly more expensive and we can do certain things that certain competitors can't. Um, so we do the whole ROI cost efficiency of this printer. You can get two for the price of one of uh, another printer. So if you have a downtime of one printer, hypothetically one printer doesn't do well or something happens to it and it's down, you still have another printer up and running to allow you to continue your workflow. Um, as engineers, we love the word redundancy. Um, I live and die by that in my career. It's the more you have redundancy, the easier it is to, to continue and um, kind of have your workflow in a place where it's peak efficiency. But as I mentioned, um, 
we practice what we preach. We talked about end use parts um, in the additive world. Uh, people will tell you, no, you can't use 3D printing for final parts. I'm here to say that, yes, you can. There are certain parts that you can actually use um, that allows you to make mass production in this, in, in batches, of course. Um, so in our own pr printers, there are actually 3D printed parts in, in them. Every printer that you, we offer has some sort of 3D printed part on them. Um, so you can see some of the lists here. And then that's pretty much it for uh, Intamsis. Really quick uh, dive of what we offer um, and how we fit in with EAC and their other offerings. Uh, I'm not here to tell you guys that, hey, you guys should just buy our solution and not any other solution. No, that's not how we approach things. Um, similar to EAC, we offer a agnostic approach. Um, we're more customer centric than a lot of other brands. We want to make sure our offerings actually fit into your guys' applications, which allows us to have a better customer experience. And I truly believe that. So if there's any other questions or any other times where you need information, feel free to reach out to me or anyone from the EAC team.